What's up everyone? It's me, Katya Tension here for another tutorial and as I promised, I'm going to do uh, tutorials completely focused on one thing at a time. So today, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to talk about um, the base the contour shapes, and different products that are nice to use. So today, I might get really close to the camera. We'll see how angles work out, but let's go ahead and get this started. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how I go from this to this. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Mama might be a little tipsy, but welcome <laughs> to YouTube. No one else talks about being as drunk as me, so. Uh. <laughs> Alrighty, let's get into it. Of course, glue down your eyebrows. If your eyebrows are already high, you don't have to do this. Between steps, I go ahead and I start hydrating with the Neutrogena Hydration Lotion Face Cream. I don't know what it is, but it's nice. Please hydrate your body. If you don't, your makeup is going to out you. You're going to put on all this makeup and it's going to say, Oh, this person don't hydrate themselves. It's going to be a little wrinkly and you're going to see your pores. All right, so here is my powder puff. On one side I use a darker powder and on the other I use a lighter powder. When I'm setting my eyebrows, I'm gonna use the darker powder side for uh, a rosy beige. And then on the side I have, uh, I use my whites. The back I use to uh, press on my face. When I've been in drag all day, it picks up all the oils, but I don't want all those oils on the main side that I use. So what I do is I tap a little bit of powder on and then I take more powder and I press it in so that my eyebrows smooth out and uh, stay down, they're pressed down. Again, some hydrating spray and then the Smashbox silicone primer. This will blur out your pores. Uh, I have pretty large pores. Uh, for some reason my camera stopped recording so I was just gonna go ahead and show you guys the after. Then I go in with my cream contour. Now there's numerous ways that you can contour your cheeks. A lot of girls uh, don't know exactly where to place it. Um, obviously there's no rules to makeup and drag, but what I find as a great guide is to go from the little uh, point in your ear and you can use it as a guide. You can put the contour to start right where that is or just above it um, and have it go inwards to the direction of the corner of your lips. So. If you were to draw a line where your contour is all the way in a like a little curve down to the corner of your lips, you would have a perfect curve and, and it would be like that. However, you don't want it to go all the way out. The point is to lift your face. If you want that to go all the way out, it's not going to lift your face. It's going to look like you just got a lot of contour on, which technically isn't wrong. A lot of people make a whole line of contour. Some people will go ahead and put an entire line of contour starting from the ear down to the mouth, but I like to place it in the deepest part of where my contour would be um, to create that three-dimensional look. You need to remember that with creams, when you blend it out, it's going to spread out. So if you put a lot on, you're going to have a lot of contour that's going to be spread out when you're blending. I do my contour before my foundation, which obviously is not a necessity. Oh. Well, there went my wig cap. <laughs> um, but it's just how I do it because it does make your contours seem more natural and less um, caked on, as if, if that makes sense. All right, so jump forward. I'm gonna continue placing my cream contour in places that I want to round out or seem smaller. A lot of people use different beauty blenders for different parts of the makeup, but I just use one giant one. It saves a lot of time and product. So this part, uh, obviously the darker side, I will use to blend out my contour, and then I have a side for highlight and a side for regular foundation. So now let's get to blending. When you're blending your foundations or creams, uh, make sure you're dabbing up and down. You can do it in small motions. I lift away quite a bit, um, but don't smear it around everywhere. You, there, if you find a little spot that's not blending, you can slightly smear it but don't go crazy. What you wanna do is you wanna pick some of the product up and place it elsewhere. And you, and you need to do this so that it blends out and you don't have any lines, unless lines are what you want. If you want lines, just make them intentional, I guess. So I go ahead and I start dabbing. And what I wanna do is use this cream contour 
to lift my cheekbone and accentuate my cheeks. Women have normally naturally more round cheekbones than men do. Men you normally have more harsher lines and more square faces. I am blessed with a lot of fat on my face, so this is a little bit easier for me. Um, I've always been blessed with high cheekbones, so um, what I do is I just accentuate them. Now, the point of cream contours or contour in general is to create the illusion of a deeper shadow on your face. What it's going to do is it's going to hollow out certain parts of your face to accentuate the high points of your face. So what I'm doing is I'm putting more contour uh, towards the back so it's a little bit darker and I'm blending it outward. This will make it seem like my cheekbones are a lot larger and higher than they are. Now, women also normally have smaller foreheads than men. Now, if you haven't noticed, mine is basically a five head, so I need to turn my five head into a four head. And so what I do is I, of course, make it darker towards the outside and blend it inward so it's lighter. You want a very blended gradient uh, from the contour to your skin color. Um, the brightest will be in your T-zone. Alrighty, now time to fast forward to foundation. I saw Nikki Tutorials use Dermacol once, so I had to do Dermacol. <laughs> it is one of the highest coverage foundations I've ever used, and it is so easy to work with. It's so easy to work with that even Krylon and some other foundation brands that drag queens use, um, on their packaging, it does recommend to pair it with this foundation. Um, so I use a fluffy foundation brush. I don't think it's the right kind of brush, but it works for what I want it to do. I apply it in my T-zone because I don't want to mud up my original color because um, of course when you blend it in with uh, the contours it might come out a little darker because you know colors blend that's how life works so what I do is I apply it on my T-zone where I don't have any foundation or color yet applying with a brush also makes it easier to cut under your contour if you don't like the shape it gives you a chance to uh, clean it up basically if you can either have a super strong line that's cut under your cheek or you can buff it out with your brush before you blend everything with your beauty blender. So right now what we're doing is just placing the product and then I will of course blend a little bit with my brush and then after that I will blend with my beauty blender to really press it into the skin and pores. So once you've finished placing the product in your T-zones, go ahead and start dabbing the leftover product that was on your brush and put it over your contour sections. Then you can go ahead and clean up even more under your cheek and then take leftover product on your hand with your beauty blender and blend, blend, blend. You're pressing this into your skin. So then I take my concealer and of course you don't want to put it everywhere. Uh, that is a common mistake that people do. What you want to do is you want to place it in spots that are going to lift your face. So I put it on the inside, you know, where you want the inside to be more highlighted. And then you put it in your forehead, nose, and for me, I like to highlight my chin and above my lip. I think it creates an extra dimension. So then I add a whiter, or basically just white from Morphe, uh, a white concealer because I am pasty and so I need to match my skin tone. <laughs> so I go ahead and I place some cream contour on my nose, blend that out. I just do a, a little guidance. I don't do a full line anymore, I used to, but uh, I've learned that you're better off just making a little guidance and then of course blending it out and spreading it out. So then I use my cream contour to start drawing on some eyebrows. Uh, hopefully, unlike my, one of my other videos, they will be even this time. Uh, eyebrows are hard, but remember, they have to be sisters, not twins. So then I clean up under my eyebrows with a concealer. This will, you know, make it cleaner for when you're finishing your brows later. I like to do the brows while everything else is still wet before you set everything because if you mess up, you can just put foundation over it and you can always fix something that's not finished. Now if you set it and you did your eyebrows after your face is set, you can't just put foundation over that because it'll just become super um, grainy and it'll pick up in certain spots and it's just not a good time. So then I go ahead and I blend under my eyes one more time and I start setting. I'm using neutral over my T-zone where I like the brightness. 
And then to create extra dimension, I'm going to use my rosy beige setting powder on my contour sections. So what's that gonna, what that's gonna do is, um, basically with a more rosy, warm setting powder, it's gonna warm up your contour section so that you don't have just a cold tone brown. Um, and so you don't look like you're dead. <laughs> so then you brush that away and you go ahead with your uh, contour. I'm using my Anastasia Beverly Hills and my Ulta palettes. I start with the lightest color and then I go darker step by step. A rule of thumb really is to start light and go dark. It's so much easier to build on top of something rather than to take it away or try and void out colors. So then I go into one of my eyeshadow palettes and I use a combination of two darker browns to deepen out the very back ends of my contour. And then I go in with some blush. That blush is going to be a little transition tone between the browns and your uh, skin tone. And it's also going to put some life into your skin so again you don't look dead. You uh, don't want to be cold all the time. And then I had a nice little visit from my best friend Cheeto. He's my baby. He was feeling a little neglected, so he decided to hop up, and um, I obliged because he's super cute and I can't resist. So everyone, hi, meet Cheeto. He's a sweetheart. He literally started hugging onto my shoulder and uh, made me feel like I was a bad cat dad, but I'm not because I literally cuddle him every single day, almost all the time. He tried draping himself all over me. Such an obsessive cat. But I love him. Alright, so we've done a lot of our powder contours. Now it's time to deepen those eyebrows. What I do is I go in with a pomade from Morphe, which is in a darker color, I don't remember. And I start from the outside and blend inward, and then I make some hair strokes. Then I use the NYX brow pen. It has a micro blade tip. It's really nice. And I draw in individual hairs to make it look a little bit more realistic because while I am a drag queen and they're clearly fake, I want to give some sort of realness to the look. I don't like eyebrows that look fake all the time. Um, so having a little bit of extra dimension, it, it just feels really nice, <laughs> to be honest. Um, and then I go ahead and I use my air spun in extra translucent and start uh, baking. I also place that under my eyes so that if I have any fallout, mama will be fine. And it's time for the eyes. I'm not going to talk about this this week because next week I will be focusing on eye shape, application, and colors. Um, so you can just go ahead and sit back and relax while you watch these steps. I'm sure you can learn a little something from just watching this process. Just remember, go from light to dark, and that will be probably the best rule of thumb you could follow when doing your makeup. Um, at this time, I just really wanted to say thank you to everyone who's been watching. Uh, it does mean a lot because I work extremely hard for um, everyone to see my art, and I also want to help other people kind of learn different ways of doing makeup, and I don't know if mine's considered different, but uh, I do enjoy helping people and, you know, showcasing my art to the world. So thank you everyone for subscribing, following, watching, all that jazz. It's, it's really been a fun adventure, so uh, I really can't wait to see you guys next week. Thank you. I also want to apologize because unfortunately while I was filming this tutorial my phone did break so I wasn't able to get a final picture of the look however I did get that little video that one of my drag daughters took on her phone for me and sent to me because mama's phone is fixed now and hopefully it stays that way. <laughs>